Hi, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at a couple of decks that are thematically very similar but very different in design and purpose and execution. Uh, so I thought this would be a good opportunity for a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left we have the Zebra King Slayers and on the right we have the Z deck. The King Slayers are an illusionist playing card company design and available on their website. Uh, I think they may be on the secret menu now. And they are the first in the Kingslayer line that featured more than one color on the back, like a red deck, a blue deck, kind of like the Knox. And then the only really distinguishing feature on the backs usually are the two swords, which are uh, a little too similar to the Fontaine logos for a lot of people, but uh, whatever. These are printed by Cardamundi on the luxury pressed E7 stock. If we open up the deck and have a look, you'll see uh, they have the standard Kingslayer, I guess you can call them Jokers. Uh, probably can be used for magic tricks. I don't know what I'd do with them, but you know, I guess they could be used for Jokers. You have a spare or a duplicate Queen of Hearts, and you have a double backer. And the court cards and the aces are, uh, again, like all the uh, all the Kingslayer designs, especially the Ace of Spades with the sword stabbing through the king, and it says printed in Belgium, it being a Cardamundi deck. The one big difference, and what I really like about this deck, is the pips. They have the uh, the Kingslayer Zebra, whatever you want to call it. That pip design is pretty nice, and uh, it's featured on the court cards. And also, the court cards incorporate the zebra stripe pattern throughout. The red uh, pips are also the striped zebra pattern. If I can find, uh, that's the only color featured on the court cards at all, just on the red uh, hearts and diamonds, and spades and clubs have no color whatsoever. The back designs are, well, they are what they are. I think I'd prefer it if they'd gotten rid of the elements from the Kingslayer line entirely and just done a zebra stripe deck. It's a one-way deck, and if you give it a little flip through, you will see you know, a little bit of jarring around or jumping around of the pattern. <clears throat> Fairly subtle. I don't think if you were to do a magic trick for someone, uh, they'd, of course, be suspicious of what this deck was because it's unusual, but they might not notice a one-way design on this. Uh, these are bordered cards, and they have thin borders, so they're going to be a little dull as far as flourishes and fanning goes, in my opinion anyway. They fan okay and dribble and spring. This is, uh, I think I said it already, but the E7, luxury pressed E7 stock. It's very thin stock and I think the latest Cardamundi stock. I'm not a big fan of this stock. Uh, it has all of the problems of other Cardamundi stocks and probably more because it's very thin. It has kind of a lacquered look to it. I can kind of shine and get the light to shine on it. You can see I don't really like the finish and the, you know, it's kind of an effort at doing an air cushion finish, but it doesn't look too good and it doesn't feel great either to me. I know a lot of people prefer B9 stock and E7 stock and Cardamundi in general, and uh, they're certainly entitled to buying what they like. And if you're one of those people, you might want to pick this up because I, I'd say this is the best uh, version of the King Slayers that's been printed. Uh, just not a huge fan of the card stock. I'd preferred it to have been printed on uh, USPCC stock. Also, one thing I thought I'd mention, and this pertains to uh, the B9 and the E7 stock, is 
I've noticed with the cohorts that I've used for a long time, the red cohorts particularly, that you over time you'll start seeing some of the red on the borders and the whole edges of the decks will get a reddish look to them because uh, the colors are bleeding a little bit. Also, something I've never seen on a USPCC deck that I can think of, but uh, it certainly happens with Cardamondi. So it's one of the things you'll notice with the wear and tear of these decks is they're not as resilient. And I've done some certain types of fans that uh, put a lot of pressure on the decks. And I've actually had the corners of the B9 stock break and just ruin a jack or whatever card it happened to be. So I stopped trying to do certain flourishes with the uh, B9 and E7 stock because it can't handle it. So that's, to me, a big strike against this stock. Moving on, we have the Z deck. And this was uh, printed by the USPCC. I think I already mentioned Art of Play uh, proprietary stock. And they printed a pretty nice uh, seal with this deck. I like the seal as far as the tack stamp look goes. Usually you get the smooth ones for most decks nowadays, but this looks good. Overall, I like decks that don't have seals on them a little bit better because either you're going to destroy the seals that look good, like this one, or you're going to try and, you know, peel it off, and then you'll wind up with a lot of sticky residue all over your card uh, box, and that can get on your fingers, and then it'll go directly onto the card. So overall, I prefer no seal. But if you're going to do one, I think this is a really nice example of, you know, a seal done the right way. And this is a borderless deck. If I can get it out. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, to start with, you have the green, basically kind of like a green screen and a deck. You get four of these cards, and uh, there's instructions to a website on the deck or on the box itself. And uh, it has instructions for video editing. So if you do cardistry videos or maybe you want to do a magic trick for camera, then you can use these to, you know, execute whatever you want. I believe they're universal. Like, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use them with other decks like the Kingslayers or any deck you happen to have. I think I'm not sure about it, but I'm pretty sure you can use it with any deck. And uh, so something very new... Uh, I haven't seen it in any deck before, and it's very interesting. Uh, it goes a little bit beyond what I'm capable of doing. Uh, as you can see, I don't do any editing other than maybe hitting the pause button. So <laughs> I'm not going to be using these, I don't think. But, uh, you know, it's nice to see them making some advance in cardistry and uh, magic and such. So interesting cards cards themselves are borderless which uh, is my personal preference I like borderless cards a lot and these in particular are really nice and fans you can see it has the Z uh, logo the name of the deck right there on the back built into this design the registration isn't perfect you'll notice that along the top edge you can see a little bit of just a sliver of black here on the bottom you get white in the same area and I don't think it was intentional because it's more severe on some cards than others like barely here and pretty blatantly and severely on the next two whereas on the other end you get the white so something to be aware of you could probably use them uh, you know subtly as a one-way deck but you know I don't think these are really as good for magic as they are for fanning and cardistry moves. These look really good in fans. As you can see, uh, you get some unique uh, lines and patterns and such. Uh, you can see that the lines on this come around and kind of terminate on the back of the top card. I think that's a pretty neat design choice and uh, visually interesting. These cards are really good quality. Uh, if you like crushed stocks, I think you'll like this deck. They feel similar to the plaids and the standards and the 
uh, reprints of the one of the Podo or Pudo or however you pronounce it. Also, Bauer to play. This deck on the face of the cards has a very simple ace design, a little underwhelming. Just has the Z logo built into it. And fairly standard, maybe a little elongated pips, uh, but not a lot going on. Standard layout. You get to the court cards, you'll notice that each of these cards has the Z logo built right into the center, and they have the zebra stripes throughout. But I don't think they're done quite as well as the zebra king slayers. And that's probably the one area that I'd say the king slayers excel over this deck, is that these are a little bit simplistic uh, compared to the others, and you know. Depends on your taste, but I think I like the Kingslayer court cards a little bit better. The red has been replaced with kind of a washed out, uh, almost orangish looking color that's on all the diamonds and hearts. You can see the color stripped down of the clubs and spades. Uh, then you have the unusual, I don't know, I don't want to call it an orange. It doesn't really look orange, but sort of a very, very, very light red. So then, of course, the aces are standard. The real star of this card is the back design, I think. And this deck looks really impressive in motion, doing different cardistry moves. As you can see, it has a... Oh almost an animation to it as you do certain moves. Pretty interesting. Overall, I prefer this deck and I like uh, I like borderless decks in general. They look good in spreads and they look good in fans. Uh, of course, if you put this upside of a deck of bees, these are going to look a lot better for cardistry uh, and more interesting in movement. These are designed for cardistry specifically and I think they're really good for that whereas if you're wanting to do magic tricks you may like the Kingslayers better and that is the comparison you can kind of decide for yourself uh, I think they're both worth picking up I think the Kingslayers th these are the best version of the Kingslayers in my judgment but almost would have been better if they weren't Kingslayers at all and I would have liked them better if they'd been borderless certainly would have been more interesting to use but uh overall for me i like the z deck and uh i guess you can leave me a comment below if you have strong feelings one way or the other or if you hate uspc or uspcc and love carter Mundy, you can you know tell everybody which one you prefer one other thing i want to point out is uh i thought i'd experiment with different surfaces as you can see this is a little bit different than the last video i did uh, this is actually a very very cheap bath mat like three bucks and i'm going to use some different things on the, you know the next few videos i make and swap them around and see which one looks best on camera i couldn't resist the appeal of this because of the you know way it looks if you rub your hand across it one way uh versus the other it's too cushiony i've been messing around with it shuffling cards on it i use anything i can get my hands on to avoid buying a close-up pad uh, don't want to invest in one of those but i do like to experiment and see what works well so maybe over the next few videos you can kind of pick out the one you like best and let me know if you have any suggestions for you know surfaces or what you like to use I found that uh, neoprene sleeves for uh, laptops work good. Some mouse pads are okay. They're a little too thin. Uh, this one's a little too thick. So it's like, you know, the three little bears or Goldilocks or whatever. I'm trying to find just the right one. So anyway, thanks for watching and hope you got something out of that. Have a good day.